So in the first part of the series, we're going to create this foundation for our final scene, which is a set of trees, a terrain that is displaced, and the placeholder for the house. Okay, so first part that we are going to build here in this project is to create some kind of background where we'll be placing the trees. So uh, I'm creating a plane first um, that has a specific time number of um, subdivisions. It's like three by three right now. And I'm simply changing the color to kind of give me a better understanding on how the snow will look like. So right now I'm going to, to the polygon mode and I'm going to uh, move a bit the polygons around just to create some more interesting background that will be uh, looking more um, distorted in a way. Um, so while we have that already, we can see like three by three um, polygons here. Uh, I'm going to start creating the tree. And so let's start by adding a box, of course. Uh, change the color to some kind of brown because this is going to be a trunk of a tree and right now we'll scale it up in the y-axis and of course scale it down in the z and x-axis just to create some kind of trunk. Here I'm moving it a bit up, of course move gizmo is on the W um, keyboard shortcut. Um, yeah, I'm positioning it properly right now uh, descaling just to achieve this kind of uh, very thin trunk. So while we have that, I'm going to, to insert an edge loop in between uh, to have more control over how this, this tree will look like. So I'm adding more subdivisions here. And here we'll start to create the first branch. I created those two edge loops. And I'm positioning the vertices right now. Uh, to give me ability to extrude the polygon that is here. So I'm going to extrude it now, move it a bit. Um, and of course, this is not anything more than we had before in the, in the um, introduction session. So yeah, I, I scale this polygon that I extruded and move it a bit further away. So right now I'm going to do basically the same thing for the second branch. I'm adding some edge loops on those uh, polygons uh, more, more higher. I'm rescaling uh, those vertices together so that they will beautifully create some kind of rectangular shape for my other branch. I'm selecting this, uh, this polygon here and I'm of course extruding again. This, this one is going to be more to the side because we want to achieve this uh, three-dimensional look in the tree a bit. So I moved it and, and again I'm scaling the, the branch. And here we have the second one. Uh, now I'm going to even scale a little bit more. And I could do that a bit better, but of course this also gives us uh, this dimension in the, in the trunk that it looks uh, more 3D. So we also want the trunk to go uh, to be smaller on the top because this is how the trees looks in general. They are thicker um, on the on the bottom part and thinner on the top part. Yeah, and right now I'm like just repositioning those uh, branches to create this this more three dimensional style. Mm, yeah, and moving the top uh, vertices. This is just you know select vertices and move them around. We want to make them look uh, more or less uh, nice. And yeah, here is the, the final tree that we can see. And um, let's move a bit the top vertices. Yeah, scale them again because they need to be thinner than the bottom part. And here is the final tree for our forest. We are, we are going to duplicate it a lot in the further parts. Yeah, so the next step for us would be to duplicate this tree. So I'm selecting it first and I'm going to go to the object operations. So I tap on the bottom right button 
and I go to operation and then choose duplicate and I'm moving the tree a bit to the left and to the top I'm also going to position it in the y-axis because some trees can be higher and someone some of them could be lower and again I'm duplicating it and basically the process is going to look like this right now I'm just going to move and rotate a bit uh, the trees Yeah, now I'm going to slightly modify the uh, tree that we can see here. I'm going to move a bit the vertices because we want to achieve a bit more um, differentiation between the trees. So this one is going to be more distorted. And uh, I'm going to also change slightly this one because if all the trees were really the same there, they would not look very realistic. So I'm just doing some random adjustments to those trees uh, we're going to have the base of those three four models that later on we'll be um, duplicating even more so what i'm doing now is i'm going to select all of these and group them together so we have this option and right now when i move uh, one of them i'm just moving the whole group so this is going to be very useful later on so the next step for us would be to create some kind of placeholder for the future house that we're going to build. So we start by creating a box and we'll be resizing it to match the overall end effect bounding box for the, for the house. So this is like a fundament of the, of the house and uh, we're going to change the color slightly to something that doesn't pop up so much because it makes us think about the bounds a bit better if the colors are more close together so now i'm going to duplicate this box because i don't want to go from the empty from the same uh, box that we have by default and i'm going to the vertex mode i'm going to uh, modify the uh, the mesh a bit so what I'm doing first is going uh, like selecting top vertices and moving them down and now I'm going to scale them slightly um, yeah next I'm going to select the first the top uh, polygon and extrude it and going to the move um, gizmo and moving it a bit up and again scaling it and as you can see, this is already starting to create some kind of uh, bounds around the future house. And in general, it's very useful to create uh, placeholders for the future parts of the scene because it makes you um, create the final structures that look more um, structurized. You know, in a sense. So here we welded those two vertices together to create some kind of uh, of a roof structure. And what I'm gonna do now is to create a part of the roof that will be facing the other direction. So I duplicated the bottom part again just to speed up the, the process because we don't want to go from the simple box. So I'm doing the same thing, selecting the vertices and welding them together. And then I have two more vertices that I need to select and weld them. So, and I collapse them here, right? It's not welding, it's collapsing. So now I'm moving the the bottom vertices together to create this type of, of a roof that we want to achieve and I'm going to the uh, objects tab to to move the whole object here position it in a proper place in the in the house and again this is just placeholdering so this is not going to be a final model we are going to remove it later on but it's going to be very useful for us in the future. So to see a bit the um, separation of those two meshes, I enabled the ambient occlusion um, because this, this kind of shows us where this mesh 
connect to this other mesh. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to achieve a bit more um, interesting mesh shape so that it's not that simple and it's not that uh, boring, let's say. And again, I'm just, you know, taking those higher level bounding boxes for the future model and making sure they look nice. So I don't know yet what I want to achieve, but I'm trying out different um, ways. So yeah, this one looks nice and I can already imagine that there will be two logs that are supporting the top uh, roof assembly. And this already looks good to me. I'm selecting the, the bounding boxes and grouping them. And here we have the final mock-up for our environment and the hat.